Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Carol Manning and in this video I'm going to be painting this little ladybird on this lavendery colour cornflower using watercolours. So by the end of it, as you see here, this clip from the end, we'll end up with something along this line. So I'm using a fairly limited palette um, for the flowery petals. I'm using purple, ultramarine and a touch of mauve. Largely diluted and for the ladybird I used indigo and black for the dark areas and permanent rose and rose madder for the red and for the stalk and green leaves I used cadmium yellow and sap green and a little bit of hooker's green so and those are all Windsor and Newton Cotman colours mostly I used a size 5 round brush in this so that's where we are as far as material goes and there'll be a list of what I'm using in the description. I'm starting with a line drawing and using a diluted wash of darkest in purple. I apologise for the lighting at the beginning of this. Um, my overhead light was flickering like mad. We had really bad weather and it was obviously affecting the lighting as we our lights kept started flickering but this the lamp my overhead lamp was particularly badly affected so it, this first part is before I gave up on it <laughs> so apologies for that but I'm working on one area at a time so I'm doing a little section of the petals at a time so say I'm starting with a wash of diluted in purple and the other bit I just dipped it into was a mixture of the purple and mauve and starting with lighter areas and then putting in a slightly more concentrated areas for the edging and the lines. I've now turned that light off so I apologise for the beginning part but I'm afraid there's slightly more shadows than normal due to the problems with the electricity. So I'm going around now edging leaves and putting some lines down the middle part using a slightly more concentrated purple um purple this is largely wet on dry I haven't really used much wet on wet method for this often people do with flowers and I sometimes do but um, I also do like using wet on dry a lot and that's how I've done this flower so I'm using the ultramarine to add the cooler shades darker shades of bluey areas so basically working around that section with the blue now and adding that in apologies when my hand gets in the way I'm going to have to stick myself a note up or something telling me to keep my hand out of the way because I don't realise I'm doing it So 
So the first part's fairly repetitive and it's just a case of going over a flower like this. I decided to do a flower this week as I was fed up with the <laughs> miserable weather we have and I wanted something bright and cheerful and summery to counteract all the rain and miserable dark weather we've been having. So now starting on the second section, obviously working our way around the green leaves and the ladybird carefully. The petals are fairly repetitive. I've done the same throughout across as I go across. I've started with a diluted wash of purple, then put a slightly more concentrated paint around the edges and to put the little lines in. And then I've added in the cooler areas with the ultramarine blue. If you're enjoying watching this, if you could please press the like, it would be much appreciated as it helps my channel to grow. It's only been a few months and I'm intending to keep going, so anything that helps me grow would be greatly appreciated. And perhaps if you want to see more, consider subscribing. The reference photos can be found either at the end of the video if you pause and screenshot, alternatively I do have a little Facebook group and on that I put up PDFs of the line drawing and the reference photo that can be downloaded from there. The link to that is in the description below. So I'm recording this video just after Christmas and New Year, so I hope you all had a nice one, time. And I was lucky enough to get some new art supplies for Christmas, which was really nice. So I have got myself now some set of 12 pans, 12 pan set of Horodam Schmincke Super Granulating watercolours. I've already got some of the super granulating watercolours already in tubes um, but this is a set so it's got some colours I haven't tried so far. I think it's got perhaps one or two of the ones 
I already have, but mostly they're new ones to me, so I'm going to really enjoy trying those out. So I'm going to actually unbox those and do a swatching and some sort of try out of them in a video probably in the next few weeks. So I'm looking forward to being able to use those. I'll probably be my first set that I open because I'm really keen to try those. I really do like the Horror Dime Schmincke Super Granulating Paints. The One of the other sets I've got is a set of 24 professional watercolours pan set. Um, the Winsor & Newton professional ones, obviously, if you follow me, have been following me, realise I use the Winsor & Newton Cotman ones. I wanted to get some professional ones to see what the difference was, whether they are better, whether there is a lot difference in the quality. So I will be again unboxing those and doing a swatching video at some point in the next couple of months. I'm obviously not going to do them all in a row because that would be boring, um, but I will be doing them over the next two or three months. I'll be doing some swatching and trying out videos and then you'll after I've done those you'll then see me using these in videos. Um, one of the other sets I've got, so I did ask for a lot of art supplies for Christmas, um, is the Chanelier set, set of 36 half pan palettes of those so I'll be going trying those at some point and doing a swatch and session, session, I can't say it, session on those. And the other ones I've tried out, which I am really also, probably my second after the um, Hardem Sminker ones, these are the ones I'm most interested in trying out. I uh, don't know quite what they're called, Prima, Art Philosophy, it's got the box. Um, it's the set's called Terrain, and it's a set of greens and sort of pinky brownie colours. Um, so yeah, the, they'll be really nice to try out for the greenery on plants and flowers. Well, the, the pinks and yellows and things for the flowers, but the greenery on the plants, both in backgrounds I use and when I'm doing um, botanicals. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to trying out all of these. So. I will have, as I say, some swatching videos coming up over the next couple of months and also some trying them out on some projects. I will be doing, finding some suitable pictures to try them out on. So yeah, really looking forward to doing that. So I hope you perhaps like watching that sort of thing because that will be coming up in for in the next couple of months. So I've got lots of ideas for this coming year, so we're at the beginning of the year, so there'll be lots of variations on wildlife animals, um, insects, bugs, I like doing ladybirds and butterflies and things like that, so I'll be doing some of those, birds and various other wildlife critters, and as well as doing some botanicals, some flowery type pictures, sometimes they will be combined with like a butterfly or a ladybird or something like this one I'm doing at the moment is but sometimes they'll be standalone flowers um, I don't know quite how I'll tackle them till I get to them depends on the flower they might be just wet on dry like this one or they might be a mixture of wet on wet and wet on dry have to wait and see what ones I come up with um, yeah, so I've been collecting lots of pictures that I want to have a go at over the next few months, as well as 
ones from the free websites. I've also got a lot of flower pictures of my own. My mum has an absolutely amazing garden. Um, so yeah, so I definitely take lots of photos when I go and visit because there's always very pretty flowers in her garden. And when I'm out and about, I try and try and photograph wild wildflowers like bluebells and things like that. If I'm out walking the dog, I tend to take my camera with me in the months where we've got the flowering season and so I will try and take close-ups of wildflowers so I can work from my own references. Wildlife from birds I tend to use largely free images because I don't get much chance to photograph wildlife up that close unfortunately. Um, much as I'd like to be able to I just don't get the time to and I'm not that good a photographer to get the close-ups of the birds to be able to get the detail that I want to paint put in my painting so largely they tend to be copyright free images from places like Pixabay and Unsplash um, and other sites like that so yeah so lots of ideas coming up and I'm also going to try and make sure I include some beginner type paintings and as well as some as more complex ones and also I'll probably do some um, pictures like I've done over Christmas where they're a combination of where I combine two pictures over a couple of weeks perhaps do one half like when I did the mistletoe and festive squirrels not festive squirrels sorry festive sparrows um, yeah so I'll be doing probably some pictures like that where I create a composition with a variety of images which is how I tend to work anyway in my own work I tend to take different images and combine them in a composition so yeah so lots of things to look forward to in the coming year So that's the petals done, so I'm just now moving it back to where it was. I had to turn it around because I just couldn't paint that way. So I'm now going to be mixing up the greens. I'm going to be using, just lifting a couple of bits there that were too dark. I do actually eventually, off camera, take that blue part in the middle down very slightly as a when I came back to the next day it just stood out a bit too much. So I'm mixing up here sap green, hooker's green, a mixture of that with the lamp black in and a mixture of sap green with some cadmium yellow in. Oh, let's use the tap in, my dog's just come in. So again, using a diluted wash of the sap green to, well, a mixture of sap green and cadmium yellow to give it all a base colour. So 
just working my way around. Still using the number five round brush. I think that's the only one I've used in this painting. This was actually my third attempt doing this a flower recording this flower painting I ended up painting it three times each ended up slightly looking slightly different but overall pretty much the same because um, the camera cut out on both the first two in the middle in the same part so I can even splice it together so oh yeah. luckily third time round worked So I added in some of the hooker's green to put some of the darker lines into the leaves. And mixing it with a little bit of black to add that dark edge to the side of the leaf. Just putting a bit of edging on the leaves as well. Just adding a few more lines, making sure the darker areas are dark enough. And so giving that edge an even darker edge to it. Finished the leaves there, just swapping palettes again, and I'm putting the reds in this time. So, as I said earlier, I'm using permanent red, which is the lighter of the two reds, and rose madder, and some lamp back black mixed with the reds to create the darker areas. So, just working my way across the top part of the ladybird, or ladybug, depending on what you call them. Even spots and things to do later giving it all a background paint of the lighter red to start with and then using the darker of the reds on the right hand side which is the one side in shadow So I'm just mixing some of the red and black together to do the shadowed side.
I'm just putting in the legs now on some of the, if you look closely at the reference photo, on some of it you can see where there is the little hook part of the leg where it sort of bends round, the thinner part bends round. So he's got two spots on the top of the black part of the face that look like eyes. I'm not sure whether they are or not, don't know a lot about ladybirds. Oh, they are just spots and two on the base with a couple of white stripes going through so it does look a bit like a, a face with two eyes some nostrils and a, a mouth ended up just using Mount Black on this. Um, I did see it say about indigo earlier and when I did it the first time, I, as I said I did do, the, do this painting three times, when I did it the first time I did do a base of indigo, on this one I only did the black. So you could do either. The indigo perhaps gives it a little richer colour to the black. Putting in the dots there. on the left hand side, sorry right hand side. Just realised I missed a, missed a little bit of the red body there, the red shell. Just giving it a little bit of an extra coating, riching up the colour a bit. And here I'm just lifting, using some clean water and just lifting a highlight off of it. I'm using one of the secure jelly pens, 0.8 to add in the little lines that are on the leaves of the, the green leaves. It's covered with little furry hairs, white hairs. So just adding those in with the little jelly pen. It's the easiest way to put them in. I wouldn't be able to get that fine a line with a paintbrush. Don't show up in terrifically well on the video, but they do on the actual image. The paint tin shows up quite well. So we're almost at the end. Just touching up a couple of bits at the top there that I realised I missed. And there's the finished picture. And coming up are the reference photo and the line drawing. So I hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, perhaps you consider subscribing and pressing the like button. Thank you very much for watching.